Welcome to Around the Reel with your hosts Aaron Carlson and Charles Lawson. Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Oh, so I was saying about that. Last week, I introduced us like we're hosting. Mm -hmm. It was just you, me, and Sam. Right. We didn't have like a guest. So we're not hosts. We're just two dudes talking. Yeah, but we, we host the show. Well, yeah. And she can be like a guest host when she's here. Okay. You know what I mean? But they have guest hosts. In, fa- in case one of us is sick or comes up with COVID or some physical ailment like you have normally, um, she can step in for one of us and we can still have a show weekly. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean, that is true because we did have that conversation. It's really hard for somebody to necessarily hold everyone's interest when they're just talking because – when they're just talking and they're just, you know, monologuing and going on and ranting and raving. I don't know. Sam, what do you think? Yeah. Shit. Okay, well, Sam's not here today. No, she's not. She's doing some other things and she wishes she was here, but she is not. But Chuck, we are. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. You know what's been in my head all week? God knows. <laughs> do we want, do we need to? It's a... Uh... Well, we teased him a lot, but we got him on the spot. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. You think about a lot Welcome about... Welcome back. I'm thinking saying, a lot about John Travolta this week. No, it wasn't Travolta. It's a damn Applebee's commercial. <laughs> <laughs> it's got me, dude. I've seen that shit like eight times, and it's just been in my head all day. I'm walking to the bathroom. Doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm, I'm whistling. Welcome back, Connor. All right. Yeah. Because, well, they want people back. Because <laughs> they're broke. <laughs> Fucking businesses are dying. Everybody's broke. Shit's happening like crazy. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Around the Real. We've uh, had a slew of subject matters we were going to cover today. Um, but we decided to start about, or just start talking about what we did starting a production company for the the purpose of being legitimately taken seriously and to do everything legally correct. Right. When we are starting a small business, which happens to make films. And, um, I had no idea about what we needed to do to do that or get anything like that started in the beginning. But, uh, Chuck being a producer and being a guy who has been self-employed in the past kind of had a, a way of putting some stuff together. So Chuck, what was the first step? What were some of the first ideas you had when we started kind of just briefly touching on moving forward in this? I think the biggest thing was research, um, going through and starting to figure out everything that we would need um, to be able to affordably start without having to have a bunch of different insurances and all these different things. You know, you start looking at, you know, mass movie companies and they have all these these giant overhead expenses. However, for us just getting started, we really just needed to have a business license, um, keep things simple. You know, the the more um, personal property that we were able to use as far as filming and things like that goes, we you know we have ourselves covered for that. So we didn't have to do outlying sources for insurances and all those things that can really dig holes into you right away. So the biggest thing that we just started doing was just paperwork, and you know, every 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 single creative like Mr. Carlson needs a nerd in their life. Like Mr. Lawson. Got it. Like one of those business paper nerd people. Yeah. You know, I think, I I still think Ryan Conley has the same thing because every once in a while they go through their studio areas, you know, their nice big business park thing. And they go in that one room. There's always that one guy sitting back there. Yeah. Just chilling, doing something. And he always looks up like, what the fuck are you guys doing in here while I'm working? Right. I'm I'm working. What are you doing? They're working too. But what he's doing is all the stuff that nobody wants to do. Right. 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 Um, You know, it's fascinating to me about how little people know about starting a business in general. So let's say you are a filmmaker or you want to make films and you want to get started and something like that. Just starting from the beginning, where would someone start? I mean, you say, yeah, we got to get a business license, but how do you do that? Does anybody even know? Well, I mean, the nice thing is, is no matter where you live, wherever you might be listening to us today, um, you know, just go to your state, um, your secretary of state website and start there. And just, you know, you, it, they have tons and tons of information. I want to start a business. I want to start up a small business. And then you have to figure out what you want to do. Like for us, for CCC Entertainment Group, we started off right now. It's a soul pop. 
Soul Pop or Soul Prop? Soul Prop. Proprietorship, Yeah, yes. well, it's just like, wait till I start saying podcast later. I know, but Soul Pop is cool. Yeah. I started wanting to dance right now, like, fucking... <laughs> well, you started off singing, so dancing's next. <laughs> It'll be like Snoop Dogg, um, popping. But yeah, so we started off as a Soul Prop, and, you know, and then we'll be grow to an LLC, and the, the, basically the more we grow, the more we'll change our demographic for what the company is okay. and what it can do. Got it. And right now, you know, to do everything as a sole prop, and that way everything is easy to contain. It's the it's the easiest way to do all of the paperwork, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be for the IRS, the state, uh, B&O, or whatever you might have in your state. Everybody has something different. Um, but it's just by doing it for a sole prop, it's just all connected to your own personal name. Okay. So it's really simple. Got it. And then, you know, if you are a nerd, you can do your own taxes. I have a couple of people that I work with all the time. Mm-hmm. So they're helping us for our tax stuff. And the nice thing is, is because it took us so long to, from 2018 into 2019 to create like the Outrider, mm-hmm. that being our first one under CCC Entertainment Group, um, we didn't start seeing proceeds till 2020. Right. So there's absolutely nothing that we've had to report for the last, for the first two years of the company. Um, and that's what, you know, my tax people said. They're like, you know, don't report anything that you've done as a loss for all the things that you've purchased and everything else. Wait until you get a little bit of money that you're showing as income mm-hmm. and then start reporting all the other stuff that you already spent as startup costs. Got it. Even if it takes two years, it's still okay. It's still okay. Got it. So if someone was going forward and, and they end up getting that license, let's say they get a sole prop or they end up opening an LLC or whatever they decide to do, what is the purpose of having – that under your belt as a tool. I mean, we know that y- y- it looks a little more legitimized when you have a business license and you're saying blah, blah, blah. But can that help you as a filmmaker do other things besides just being legitimate? You know what I mean? It's, how, does it, how does it help you maximize anything you're trying to accomplish? Well, aside from you know, being legitimate, let's say, let's say you want to film – on the streets of Tacoma. Okay. And you need to, you know, and you know that you're going to do something. I mean, you know, you can, you can use up the sidewalk. You can be smart and just do everything running down the sidewalk with a small crew. But if you do something and you want to have a part of your movie that's going to be bigger and you, you have to have a business license to be able to talk to the city to apply for a permit. Got it. And on all those types of things. Okay. You can go in there as an individual and do it. Mm-hmm. But if you have a business license, it's the same thing. Having a business license just gives you that little bit of legitimacy. Okay. Yeah. And a business license only costs a couple hundred dollars. All right. I mean, if you're starting a production company, it's, you know, the paperwork startup of everything is some of the least expensive things you can do. Right. Got it. Got it. And that protects you as well. Exactly. Right. Just as an individual, like if we go out and blow up a car on the city street of Tacoma and that poor old lady's walking by and we didn't see her step into the shot and she wasn't even supposed to be a part of the crew and we blow her fucking glasses off her face it's a sole prop i'm screwed you're still screwed so <laughs> <laughs> you should go to llc yeah. get I, i'd more. be the one running through the street right cut! everybody cut oh. and i'd be the one like holy shit keep that shot that was fucking great <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, we'll give her a credit. We'll even give her the memorandum at the end of the thing. Like, <laughs> No, because that would be funny. You mean a memoriam? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Because she, she went blown. <laughs> yes. Dude, that's a hell of a stunt. You know what I mean? Dude, I couldn't get my real than that. And then that would be the end of this company, and then we'd have to start another one. <laughs> but that's the beauty. That's like, so, getting, that's like when like your dog dies. You just go out and you find another dog that looked like it, and you don't have to change your pictures or anything. <laughs> that's, that's like tricking a kid. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's good. So anyway, I wish we could do that with people. I don't want to find people who look the same. But what if you really like how they look? You just find a different model, you know, like they have different, you know, like with Barbie, there's all those different Barbies, but it's still Barbie. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. But it's Barbie. <laughs> Dude. Okay. Fine. Maybe you want Han Solo. I don't know what you're into. I'm just saying that he had different outfits too. That is true. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay, so when you get your company up and running, okay, and then you're you know, now you're a filmmaker, right? So now you've got okay, you've got your project in mind. Now you got a company. What what's the next step? The next step to me is okay. How do we put our name out there? And we talked about marketing a little bit before on the show. Yeah, exactly. That's one way to do it. But why are you marketing? Because you need, like any business, revenue. Right. Okay. And to create revenue and being a filmmaker, doing you know filmmaking podcasts, anything you want to do that involves any type of entertainment, word of mouth. You know, you need to you need to create an audience, mm-hmm. so you have something that you can sell to people. Right. It's not like we're you know a toy store where all of a sudden you know we can 
advertise and be in malls and have all these posters and everything, or, you know, all these billboards and everything else that they have out there. Mm -hmm. We're a production company. It's right. a lot different. So you have to figure out good avenues in which you can promote yourself. So I have my own opinion on this, but I want to know yours. So what do you say to creatives out there that don't want to look at what they're creating as a product to sell where they're like, if you're doing, if you're in this for money, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. What do you, what do you tell somebody like that? Then I wish them all the luck in the world with what they're creating, but it is just, it's a hobby or just a passion. Mm -hmm. We're doing this because we're trying to turn our passion. That is our dream mm -hmm. into a reality of making money doing it. Right. That's our goal. Some people who believe that, you know, creating something and making money off it is a waste, then, I mean, they live hand to mouth always right. because you have to make money to survive in this world. I have no problem admitting and believing that. I mean, so, yeah. so if they think that it's, it's a downfall on their creation to put a monetary value to it, then, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I mean, it's a hobby. No, be a dick. Okay. It's a hobby. Right. If you're not, if you, if you don't think you can sell your passion and something you do, and especially if it's good, I mean, you know, have you ever seen somebody's artwork and it's like, wow, yeah. you know, if, you know, like say for your example, you guys always have that stuff on arts on sixth because mm -hmm. you got, you know, for where you live, you know, some of the Sam stuff, mm -hmm. she could put up a little booth and, you know, sell some of these she little things, absolutely, $5, yeah. $10. And it takes her like, you know, 20 minutes to paint something. Yeah. She could sell the shit out of it. She wanted to. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So. You know, I, I see a lot of filmmakers and some of the filmmaker uh, groups that we're in. And I'm, I'm assuming this goes across the board with all creatives or anything um, or anybody out there trying to do something. You're right. Yeah. Hobbies are one thing. And then wanting to make that, you know, maybe I, I'll say it just a career and doing something where you what you love doing becomes your the income stream that you want to survive in our world. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think mixing those two things is vital for Everybody, because I can't, I can't sit back and, and believe that someone who's just doing a passion project just for fun is not dreaming about the fact, God, I hope enough people see this where it blows up. To me, I think they just don't want to admit that because they've read enough people say, well, you know, it's a passion. You don't do it for the money or it's not going not gonna to work. That's fucking bullshit to me. You know, I want people to recognize our work. I want people to enjoy it if, they, if it's their thing. Sure. And if we can make uh, a living at doing that, how does that change my passion for it? It doesn't. It doesn't at all. It's two separate things. This is a business. You know, it can be something that you can live on doing. You don't have to go to Hollywood to to make it in the filmmaking industry. You don't. Correct. You know, you can you can do these little movies, um, low budget features. And with the right marketing and the right tools, you can find enough people to, to monetarily make a living off of, you right. know? I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing something that you love and making $100,000 a year, $80,000 a year. That's no different than getting your nine-to-five job, right? What if you could do the same thing just making movies? Right. You know, and that's what we're trying to do. I'm not trying to be a millionaire here. I just, wanna, I just don't want to go to work anymore to a place that's benefiting more from me being there in my hours than... Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, dude, dude, if you've got a talent in something... And you're really good at what you're doing, and you're getting better at it as you go. Why not look at it as a potential second job and try to make that your primary? Right, right. exactly. And going back to what you said, too, a minute ago, I was thinking back to when we were in our 20s. I had a buddy, actually, who liked to paint. Okay. And he was that person. He was that, you know, no, I don't care if anybody bites my painting. You know, if, you know I just want to put him out there and let people see him and enjoy him because it's my passion. Mm -hmm. This is also somebody who's not us. They came for money. Oh, uh, yeah. Being a broke motherfucker definitely changes your perspective on exactly. things. Exactly. Okay, I get it. Um, but and that's sometimes what it is too. I see some people who come from privilege don't realize what the privilege actually means. Okay, that's one way to look at it. But I'm sure there's people out there that I don't have those uh, that kind of uh, security, you know, financially, and yet they don't want to maybe they are doing their art for other reasons. And I get that. That's totally fine. Maybe it is just a hobby or something like that. But, you know, to me, those filmmakers that are, are really out there, let's say, doing the work and putting in an effort to make these films, maybe it's because they have to, they have to tell a story or they're trying to get information out there, right. you know, about a certain subject or they're just having a great time 
because they're excited about you know the crew and and just and hanging out and doing these things because it's fun. I don't think there's a problem with that, but I don't think they have a right to tell other people that they're doing it wrong if they're trying to make money with it. That's my issue. That's where I'm like, you know what? I'm not talking shit about you not trying to make money off something that you did very well. Don't talk shit about what I'm trying to do to make money with it. Right. You know, I don't think that degrades my passion for what I'm doing. I think that if we did run into somebody like that, that would be a little different. It'd be more yeah, somebody I, who is um, solo act. You know, they do these art, you know, the artsy films, you know, mother, the nature films, something that they go out and film on their own. Because as soon as you start adding people to this crew, mm -hmm. I mean, granted, don't get me wrong. We're in the middle of getting ready to do Say Goodbye, which is a passion project mm -hmm. because we don't have a budget for paying everybody a bunch of stuff yet. Sure. If that could change, then I would share right. with the crew. Right. Um, so that's a little different. But the whole idea of what we're doing is to do something to same thing get awareness right so the people who are involved with the project get their name out there it goes on the imdb database and everything else so that's a little bit different but these guys who just sit there and want to just make their little films if they're bringing people in and if the people are getting paid and they're not good you know it's it's just a lot different than you know if, if they're not anticipating to make money off what they're doing right you know our thing is to eventually continue to grow continue to use the same actors that we're using so as we grow they grow money rolls Everybody gets to share. Right. Everybody gets to you know get pushed up and built up from there. Um, so yeah, it's really hard thinking about the aspect of what people say is worth going after monetarily, and you know thinking that you're being um, untrue to your creativity. Yeah, by, that's you know, what I don't by like. saying I want you know money for it. Yeah, yeah. I just think that it, I think you can separate both. I yeah. honestly do, and I don't think one takes away from the other. I don't feel that way at all. Like I was making movies and not thinking about money. And that feeling I had to make them was, is exactly the same right now that it is well, was back then. Right. Nothing has changed other than there's other elements to what we're trying to accomplish. And it makes it a lot harder to make sure that you're putting the effort into your projects in the same way, you know, that you did back then when you weren't thinking about building a business with it, you know. Um, but it can be done with, with help, you know. Sure. Yeah, with your help, I'm able to still focus primarily on the creativity where I've got my nerd <laughs> who can help me with all the books and stuff. And we balance each other out that way where now you, you doing some of the more creative side too, you know, like the artwork stuff, ideas you're coming with getting into the podcasting with me, writing that screenplay that you did. Right. I mean, you're gradually growing in the creative way and I'm starting to gradually turn it now. Okay. Yeah, this is a business. We can do this, you know? And me, in my background as a salesperson before, I, I, I know the techniques. It's all the same shit. You know, selling a product is selling a product. It's no different. You're selling yourself, you know. You're selling uh, what's great about it. You're trying to tap into people's uh, emotional side here and there. Get them to like what you're doing and why you're doing it. I mean, all those things, you know. When selling houses, it's the same thing as selling a movie. It's no different, right. you know. It really isn't. Um, so it's interesting to me that there's, you know, I've been, I've been seeing that online now and then from people and I always feel like they're disgruntled you know like there's there's artists out there that had the idea to and the excitement right away to do something and it didn't work out so then they went down the passion road where they're like you know you just do it because you love doing it and then anybody trying to do something outside of that because they failed at it they kind of hate on them and I think that's just a bunch of garbage I don't think that's cool at all well I mean yeah I mean that's that's a, that's a very interesting point to, of a way to look at it, and that's just it, is you don't know what people's past are. I mean, think about it. You just said you know you still have the same excitement now as you did when we started doing these things. Now, when we were doing these things originally, um, when we were just goofing off with the camera and the kids and writing these little quick improv stories, um, you know, that was a lot different. And like I said, you were making memories with your kids. Now, let me ask you this, and this is going to go deep on you for a second here. I'll go deep, Chuck. Okay. <laughs> so uh, when you were dealing with your kids... And they weren't paying attention, and they were screwing off behind the camera. And you know you were trying to get something done. Sure. Um, how did you respond to them? I, uh, I, I, I kind of yelled at them. Okay. Yeah. Now, I was, I was a really nice parent about it, though. Now, when, when we were filming the Outrider, now you're dealing with people who aren't family, right? They, they, some of them know you really well. Sure. Some of them only kind of. Mm -hmm. How do you think you responded to them when you were trying to get stuff done? Well, yeah, that's a good point. I was, uh, I held, I bit my tongue quite a bit uh, because you want to lead by example. And sure. you want to be as professional as possible. And being a uh, young director, 
like I technically am. I mean, young. Well, I'm sorry. Did you use the word term young? I don't care if you shaved off. You're gray. You, it looks not, good though. You, you do. You look. You look lovely. Why is every time I mention how you look, you look over my shoulder at the Outrider poster? Because you know that's that's Marcus Ford. <laughs> but he's got the scruffy on there. Yeah, he looks cool though too. But he earned <laughs> that gray, you know, or mine. And it's in black and white. You can't really see it in real life and that color shit. This is all fucked up. I mean, <laughs> it's, I don't know. I got to get used to it. But. Deal, dealing with people. Sure. So yeah. What was it like dealing with people on the set? And, and when you wanted to get something done or, you know, you always say that you're open and that you yes. want to talk to people and you're open to collaborative ideas and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm going to jump out of the Outrider for a second. I'm going to talk about something that nobody knows about except for our closest friends and family. Okay. You had a bad experience of saying, you know, when we shot the con, which was our own little Mm -hmm. teaser feature film to see if we could actually do a feature film right um you know nothing about it is legal and all that kind of stuff so nobody will ever see it except for us but still um you had issues when it came to collaborating i did and it really bothered you so has that did that change your mindset as far as how far you're willing to go as far as collaborating what with off of your base idea yes it did i really learned a lot about where people do need leadership all right. And whether I'm that guy or not is, is yet to be seen. But I feel strongly about, you know, collaborating as a whole, because the more minds you put together, the better something can get. That's just the truth about anything. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, early on when we were doing the con, that moment that you're talking about, I, I had it in me to always try to listen and to be constructive and make people happy about what we're doing. Even if it wasn't their writing or their project or their idea, if they had ideas, I wanted them to be able to, you know, still pursue those things because sure. it gets them excited about the project more. They're invested in it more and then they'll do a better job. Right. Right. So in the scenario we're talking about, I tried to alter that scene the day of because a couple of the actors weren't comfortable with the scene. Now, in my brain, my immediately was thinking to myself, you've had this script for six years. <laughs> this scene has been in this script for six fucking years. All right. Why am I finding out about the problems now, the day of the shoot? But I didn't say that. I worked with them on a limited time schedule we had to try to come up with something that worked. And it was a nightmare that day filming. It was a horrible scene. I do not like the scene. I'm, I wish that that would never happened. I wish we would have just cut it and reshot it, but I went with it anyway. Um, the outrider, when that happened because of that earlier scene, I, I remembered that specifically and early on in our production meetings, I made clear to everybody. I have no problem with listening to ideas. No problem with collaborating with anybody. Sure. I want everybody to invest in the screenplay. I want them to take notes, send them to me. If there's something you don't like that you want to change that you want to add to that, maybe it's here or there. I'm not talking about little words here and there. That's fine. You know, I'm talking about major changes in a story, you know, shifts that we need to take because a, they may not be comfortable with it, or maybe they got a better idea. They think all that stuff's great. Like, let's talk about it first. And if it makes sense to the story, we can do it. But don't throw that shit on anybody the day of. So I want everybody to go in there early, read it, learn it. If you got changes, let us know. Let's work through that before we go out there and film this stuff. That was it. So, and I think that's good leadership, though, because now everybody's on the same page where before I'm like, hey, if you got an idea, fucking throw it my way, dude. Let's go. That shit didn't work. (laughs) It didn't work. It didn't work. I was stressed out. I was pissed off. I was unhappy, and that's not how you're supposed to do this. And 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 the other issue was you had to do it all by yourself because I was not on set that day. Yeah, fuck face. Where <laughs> the fuck were you, by the way? Uh, working to make money for the you know support what we're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. While well, I'm trying to finish a six year project alone. Thanks, appreciate that. You're welcome. That's good. That's good. This, this rum in this coffee is good too. It's not rum. What is it? I don't know. I thought it was whiskey. No rum, rum. whiskey. I don't know. The fuck do you put in this? I don't know. Let me know if you start feeling drowsy though, please. What are you going to do to me if I pass out? Let's not talk about that right now. But I wanted to, I wanted to bring up the fact that actually that you know everything you're talking about is a good point because we ran into the same thing doing audition, getting ready to do auditions for Say Goodbye. Yes, we did. Um, we have two awesome um, young actresses that we pretty much knew were going to be playing the two characters in the movie, mm-hmm. and one of them came to me and was uncomfortable with the scene that actually we were using for the audition. Mm-hmm. 
and then also in in you know sending out the scripts to everybody and and with our core team and everybody rereading everything and looking at it from that point of view we were able to see the how we could um it could make it seem like it was the scene was worse than what i originally thought of as as i was spilling out you know i'm looking i was looking at making creating a scene that was about you know talking about forgiveness and understanding um when it seemed like it was actually a scene that was could have been you know ignoring bullying and inappropriate behavior from, right. you know, male to female. Mm -hmm. um, and so we altered the scene, you know, for the auditions, we kept it simple and we just used a different scene completely for the, everybody to audition. Right. So we'd have all something to look at. But when I went back and did the rewrite um, before we submitted to everybody, before we shut down, when we were getting ready to do table reads, mm -hmm. um, you know, that scene's you know, completely changed. And because of that change and because of that thought process that came from that actress, the whole that whole that whole vibe of that movie not only changed, it created another scene for our two young actresses to share together. Right. That's a stronger scene, right? And so, really will help you know showcase their talents, right? So what I'm hearing is saying that being able, open and collaborative with those people at an early set time before you actually got to the shoot made your story better. Exactly. See what I mean? There's nothing wrong with it, right? It's just how it's done. Right. Yeah. And Just, that's that's the way you got to do it. So I think that's fantastic when you can do it that way. If you can't do it that way, then don't do it. Don't do it. If it's a last minute thing and you're out there on the set and someone's got an issue with something, I would recommend trying to stick with it. You know, I don't think if it's a major change that somebody's looking for, you know, they signed up. They knew. Right. They knew ahead of time. If you did your job right as a writer and a director and a producer, and your actors are on board early on. They they should. That's on them. That really is on them to to take advantage of the time that they have with the screenplay and the story. If they have questions ahead of time. They should be able to ask them in, of you at any moment if they have changes that they want and send you notes. All that can be done way before you get on set. Right. And that's it's just that simple. And if they don't do that, you know, oh well, tough shit. And that's one of those things too. Is no matter what. I mean, if you're set up to shoot the way you have designed, mm -hmm. okay. I have no problem going back. We'll get everybody back out. If we can't get it all both done, and if we can't get both done today, we've got to shoot the script mm -hmm. now. Afterwards, we can shoot an alternate if you want. And that's a great way to do it. So absolutely, you know, just like same thing. You know, we we did that. You know, some of the times when we have a little co you know comedic relief in our movies, mm -hmm. you know, you 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 spin out what's coming off the script. And then you improv a few ideas to see how it goes. Right. Depending you know? on your schedule and your time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Exactly. Sometimes there's going to be filmmakers out there who are more advanced than we are where they have, you know, like a 14-day shoot. They don't have the time right, to maybe do those things. But, I mean, if you're on a lower budget and you're not really concerned about money per se because you've already known that this is a low-budget feature and you've not you've got investors involved and all these things and deadlines, you know, you, you've got time. You know, it may throw off a week or two or a month even, but who cares? If you if you want to collaborate with your crew at a lower budget indie film, that's completely okay. When you're dealing with, you know, other things that are involved and other people that are invested, then that may not be an option. So you've got to make the right choice to stay on schedule and to do those things right or or your your project's going to fall apart. It just will. And then you, then what kind of name are you making for yourself at that point? That's true. You know, that's important. No, you you were on set one time and you were dealing with uh, it was not necessarily a scheduling issue or but it was it was late in the evening mm -hmm. and the crew wasn't and the cast weren't kind of paying attention to what was going on and there was a there was a moment on that set and mm -hmm. everybody thought your producer was kind of a tool yeah 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 and I remember on a three day shoot we did where I I was done <laughs> and you saved it I was fucking done. I was worn the fuck out. Hey, we shot ten scenes in three days. I think so. Yeah, and it was. A, I think that was the, that was the Saturday. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. No, it was the it was the Sunday because we were shooting. It was Memorial Day weekend. We were shooting um, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday Monday. Monday. Yep. And it was the Sunday. Mm -hmm. and just thinking of all the stuff we're trying to get in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you were to a point, and you were just was like, guys, I need I need to take time. You went outside. You smoked a cigarette. Mm -hmm. You came back in, and you're like. I've got nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling it. Yeah, we called it that day. Yeah. I was I was done. And that was the best thing for everybody because I didn't want to be a shitty leader. I didn't want to be someone who looked frustrated or, you know, depressed where we were at at that moment or frustrated. Right. Because that would just trickle down to everybody else. And then everybody's got a shitty moment. And, you know, it's better just to get the fuck out of there, you know, and not do that. Man, I wish I could do that in real life with real relationships and people and shit. I need, I, need, I need a timeout. I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah.
But but Dad, I want dinner. Oh, okay. Fine. It's it's insane. It's insane what we can do when we set our minds to it though. You know, why can't we do that in our personal lives as well? We can do professionally. What makes a job or something you're working towards to create so much different than like doing something outside the box? You know what I mean? Why, why do we bite our lip? If I'm at work and I'm dealing in customer service and some prick comes in and they've got this major attitude because they're pissed off about something, how is it that I'm able to go... Well, sir, you know, I'm really apologize for, you know, the inconveniences you're having. And I'm really, really sorry to hear about, you know, this thing's not working out and the help's not being provided that you do you want. Um, but I'm here for you and I'm not trying to be any more of a nuisance to you than you've already dealt with with said company. Right. So you, you try to balance all this shit out and look PC when in your head you're like this mother. Fucker of what you have in real life. <laughs> I saw this prick. You know what I mean? But then you're in real life and someone approaches you the same way. Like, hey, bro. Hey, you're a sheep, man, with your mask on. <laughs> right? Right. My impulse, because I'm not on the clock, is I will beat your fucking ass <laughs> with your fucking garbage. Get the fuck out of my face. You know, that's what I'm thinking. And I will sometimes react that way. Maybe I won't be violent. Right. But I definitely will be confrontational in a totally different way right. than trying to you know, equalize or, or balance out that thing to bring that other customer down. Right. Why do we do that so simply at work? Is it just because of the security and the job and the money? Well, I mean, what, what's happened to our dignity? You know, well, why can't we keep our dignity? Why is it you always can work? Why is it every time you think you're compromising to something, you're sacrificing your dignity or your pride? Because it's true. Not necessarily. How do you figure? Well, well here, let's take, for example, I wasn't on the clock the other day. Yeah. You, you made the comment about the sheep. Well, I walked out of a store. Right. A guy yelled sheep at me. <laughs> what did I? I mean, and you know what? I was. He yeah. said it. I snapped off my mask. I was mad. Right. And I turned around and I looked at him like I was probably going to kill him. Right. But I yelled, yes, Jesus is my shepherd. Right. Have a blessed day. Right. And I stared at him as he closed his door, backed his truck out, and drove away in his broke ass fort. Right. Well, that's the thing about religion, though. You're always on the clock, Chuck. <laughs> You understand? Well, here's here's another, here's another thing you said. I'm, I'm sorry, I, f- I forgot exactly what you said, but you said something about being concerned and how some and being able to help somebody today. Mm-hmm. So you automatically turn that way when it comes to somebody who's struggling, like say, you know, for for work, for customer service. But it's not natural. When, but when was the last time you ever said something like that to, like Sam? I mean, I can't. Think That's of, what I'm saying. I can't think of a time I have looked to Amber and said, "What can I do to help you today?" You know, sometimes I mean, sometimes we do though. You yeah. know, and it depends on your mood, but. At work, when that happens, my mood is immediately sour because I want to be there fucking anyway. Okay? I want to be in my relationship with Sam. That's a beautiful, fun thing. Jesus, I did the hat thing like you it's did. A, yeah, I know. Um, you know what I mean? But, you know, why – how how do, do you have such a, a control at the office or at that job, wherever you work, that you're able to override your fucking mouth and, and, <laughs> and still be like, you know, PC about everything? Where at home, if you're not in the mood, you'll trip. That's the interesting part to me. It's like you, you think it would be just the opposite. Like people should expect when they walk into a place of business and they get an attitude as a customer that that other employee that's working there should be able to cuss them out for acting that way. Right. You know, that's how I look at it. I'm like, I should walk. I would love that, by the way. If I walked into a place, I'm like, I want my motherfucking shit right now. This is bullshit. I've called 8,000 people and no one's giving me a fucking answer. And blah, 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 blah. I want your manager right now. That person should look at me and go you know what, why don't you get the fuck out of here and come back with a better attitude and maybe I'll talk to you. Yeah, that's, I think that's how they do it in New York. I love New York. I love the East Coast, dude. I love them. <laughs> I do. They love them. You know, get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? That's fucking cool <laughs> shit. That's the way it should be. I hate living over here sometimes. Everybody's so fucking, <laughs> you well, can't talk about stuff. I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it drives me nuts, dude. It do you, really does. How do you really feel about this, Aaron Carlson? Yeah. It's a real, real shit here. But, you know, in going off that, too, I, I was thinking about that because I used to have an issue with the kids. So, you know, people who know us who are listening right now because nobody else has really listened to us except for people who know us right Actually, now. that's not true. We're okay, getting a good audience right now. That's We're true. doing pretty good for our first month. We've got a lot of people listening. Thank you, by the way, people, yeah, thank for you everybody following for, us. You know, exactly. Um, but, you know, I have a mixed family, just like you do. You yeah, know, I got I got it mixed up in a lot of ways. Yeah, you do. Yeah. But it just you know, and it used to always bug me when the when, and I don't and I always hate using this term, but you know, Amber's kids and my kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but when Amber's kids would come back from their dad's house, mm-hmm. they'd have shitty attitudes. 
Okay. And it would drive me nuts. Okay. And Amber finally you know, pulled me aside one day. And this was obviously years ago. She was like, they're safe here. They've had to act controlled mm-hmm. for so long mm-hmm. when they were there. Now they come home and they're safe. And they right. can let their guard down. And right. they can let their emotions come out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Freaking table. And... And it's the same thing, you know. Why do we not treat? Why do we not treat our family as as kindly as we do when it comes to our customer service way of doing things? Which funny thing is because we're both so much customer service with our jobs. Um, it's because it's, it's the familiarity. I don't know. I think it's just the, the fucking job. It's the money. It's the security. Everybody's afraid to lose their fucking job. Like you can't find another one. That's what they're afraid of. I think that's it. That's the control that happens when you're so. You know, you, you adamantly need to have that secured lifestyle. Like, okay, I got to pay my rent. I got to be responsible and have this, 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 this. So that immediately pops in people's heads and they feel like they got to, they got to just take a bunch of bullshit from others who know they have to take a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> you know, right. that's why people have balls when they come in there and start those Karens that come and scream and yell at people at the fucking counter or a waitress that's busting her ass. These people come in with attitudes like they're superior to them. The only reason why they feel like they're fucking superior is because they know that those people could lose their job, bottom line, if they fucking talk back. That's not a fair thing. It's disadvantage for the employers and the employee that they get a kind of – it's kind of like enabling assholes to be even more asshole. Enabling bad behavior. Yes, that's what they're doing because the customer is always right. Bull fucking shit, they're always right. They're fucking being a prick. That's the truth. And, okay. and everybody knows it. So, so anybody goes, no, that's not true. Fuck you. Yeah, you do. You know it. They know it. <laughs> oh, man, it gets me fired up. Yeah. And then, and that's one of those things, too. It's like, you know, in, in doing customer service for so long, it's like if the cust- you guys want to say the customer is always right. And I've never believed that mantra. Mm-mm. The customer is not always right. The customer always deserves the best service you can provide. Okay. Sure. But the customer is always right. No. How do I know this? Because the average human is not intelligent. Right. They're not. They're listening to us. I mean, come on. Right. Thank you, by the way. I know. You guys are sweet. Yeah. I love you all you. Thank yeah. you. Thank oh. you so much for tuning in. And we're not going anywhere. So yeah. uh, if you're offended, sorry. And if you're not, keep laughing. Yeah. It's not about offending anybody. I mean, I just think that uh, that, that situation and being a person. So if, if, if you're on set, okay, and, you, and you've and you got that attitude, yes, we got to be a leader. Everybody says be the better person, you know. And I get that philosophy. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, if you can keep your mouth shut... You are being the better person. Kind of like what you said, you know, well, Jesus loves me and the sheep and the flock and all that shit. You said all that, you know, being a better person. And you get props for that from not only Christian people, but, you know, good-hearted people know what you were doing. You know, and I see it. I'm not going to say that's not the right way to respond. But you know what? There's that primal thing inside that I think everybody has. And they think it and they want to do it, but they don't. And... I think there's a balance there that you could still be, you know, nice about it, but you can still be a dick about it too. And you can, you can, if you're smart about it, you can put both of those things out there. It's like Bruce Lee said, the fight, you know, the art of fighting without fighting. Right. You know, there's a way to do it. You just have to be smart enough to realize what, 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 um, instinctual things you have inside you that you can combine to like throw this, you know, shin, you can like a fucking street fighter at him. <laughs> you know, you can do it. It can be done. You got to practice. Sometimes you're going to be blunt and say shit and piss him off and be like, Oh God, I can't call that guy a cocksucker because I'm at work right now. And you slip up and you say it. Okay. You get in trouble, whatever. Okay, fine. But you don't have to be like, sir, I'm so sorry about your situation. I will do better next time. And try not to upset. You know, you don't need to be that stupid about it either. I mean, you got to have a spine. You got to have a spine. Sure. In my opinion. Um, but which again, should mean a lot to everybody. But then again, also being somebody who's always had a spine and always, like I said, you know, my mom commented on my post and I'm like, mom, 45 years old, yeah, you of all people should know me by now. Yeah. If somebody's going to yell something stupid, I'm not going to just sit there and cower right. or turn around. Yeah. Now I didn't go over and rip the door off his truck, No. but I look like I was going to. Yeah. Well, how do you want that a character in that situation to move it to react though? That's the beauty of film. See, right? that's what I don't know because that's one of those things too. Because it's like you know, I am a person, a person of bigger stature, as far as you're, like, you're a large man. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think that if I if I wrote a post about somebody who was bullying somebody mm-hmm. and me going in there and teaching the bully with violence, mm-hmm. 
I don't think it'd have the same reaction. And I don't, and I don't personally, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with, you know, I agree with knocking a bully down a couple of notches, mm-hmm. but I always agree with doing it with logic and straight words. Mm-hmm. I know you will lean towards more sarcastic and a fire filled. Fair enough. You know, you know, not, not a fight fueled response, but, uh, Let's see who can go longest in this argument. Come yeah, on. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and see my, who cracks first. And see, that's one of those things. That's, you know, creative differences. That's mm-hmm. the difference between you and I. Mm-hmm. You want to you wanna burn that fire hot and bright and see how big it can get mm-hmm. without, you know, burning down the planet. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, you're wrong. And I'm going to smolder this thing down mm-hmm. and get put it out nice and slow. Which a lot of people want to do. Right. Right. I fight it, the fire with fire. You know, it goes back to our story yeah. from last week. Well, well, like, you think about it. Put, smoldering you, you know, embracing yeah, you. Yeah, embracing me and stuff. And, it, and, yeah. and cooling you off. That yeah. Was, that was a lot of heat, by the way. Yeah, that was a, I mean, it's, it could work. I get it. It's just, how do you stop that mentality of a bully, let's say, like that? You know, you're right. When a customer comes in to a place of business and they have that bully mentality, like they're going to go in there and just fucking, because they're angry or frustrated about their day and they take it out on some poor checkout clerk, you know, that's bullying. Sure. Right. In Karate Kid, Danielson stood up to that bully, and not with words. He still confronted him and fought him fairly. He fought fire with fire. He just had a different technique of fighting. Okay. Right. And he won. He didn't. He, in a real fight, Johnny would have kicked his ass. Right. It's not like Ralph Macchio's character had enough skills to beat up Johnny. Johnny was anger. Ready to go fight like street fighting wise, you would have been out of the park. And I haven't seen the new stuff yet. I need to watch that. By that's the way. true. I haven't either. Um, but the old film, you know, that's the way it was. So you know, they they made it a structured fight where he could beat him by points. Perfect. He gained the respect though, right? Right. Then there's other movies where the bullies really get taken down in a really fun way by getting shot up. Or their ass blown to pieces. And that kind of stuff, you're like, yeah, get them. Because they built that story that way. So if you got somebody, let's say, like Trump, who's a bully. And everybody's been trying to fight this guy in the most PC way. You know, and holding on to their morality and their humanity and whatnot. That doesn't beat a guy like Trump. It doesn't. The only way you get ruffles, feathers from Trump is when you play his game. you got to play it better, though. Right, because he's but, a narcissist. So you've got to blow his ass up and embarrass him. But the ones who you make, have to. Okay, I don't do politics for a reason. We're gonna start because I'm but, tired of people in this room not wanting to talk about shit that's going on in current events. You need to watch fucking news. I don't. I don't. I know. I can watch the same. I can watch yeah. the news today, and it's the exact same thing it was 20 freaking years ago. Yeah, but, but it's wait, important. wait, wait. Going off of what you said, the people even who Captain do- America's a part of this now. Chris <laughs> Evans is all over the news about shit. Come on, man! You got a poster of Captain America right there. Do be like Chris Evans. I got to I got to mount that by the way. It looks, it'll look That's really nice good up behind me. It's a cool poster. But, um, but no, going off of what you said, the people who make Trump trip up aren't usually the ones ranting with him. They're the ones sitting there calmly using logic that make him stumble back, thinking back of what he said. No, no, it's the ones that make fun of him that pisses him off. Well, I mean that might be one thing, but he actually trips up in. Interviews just because he's out of his league anyway. <laughs> the guy can't just talk like a rational statesman. He's not one. You know, he's a business guy. He's out of his league, so he's trying hard. But at the same time, you know, most of these people that are out there giving him shit, he could care less. But it's people like, let's say, Stormy Daniels. She she fucking makes fun of his fucking everything down his tiny dick, all the way up to the color of his skin and his sexual illness. Because you know he fucked her, right? I mean, that's what happened. So she tells it like it is. She is the only one that tweets bad shit about him and makes fun of him all the time. And he never responds to her. He never says anything. He never posts anything. He gives Obama shit all day long. All the time it's Obama's fault, Obama's fault, Obama's fault. Obama doesn't do what? Respond to it. Right. And everybody's like, that's what we're supposed to do. You know, don't fall for Trump shit. Be more than him. I get that. But if Obama fucking tweeted, hey, Trump, fuck off, you piece of shit. I would laugh my fucking (laughs) ass off. And you know what? Trump would be shaking shaking because the amount of people on our in this country right now would applaud would applaud jesus Try to obama the they would obama they would applaud him so highly i know it and you'd be like holy shit see i think people have it in them they want it but they just want to control 
those emotions because they don't want to look like a bad person. And I don't think that's it. It's not necessarily looking like a bad person. Yes, it is. If you would have told the guy in the fucking car to fuck off and get out of your face, when he would have ran for the hills seeing your big ass coming at him. He would have been scared shitless. He would have never called anybody a sheep again. Never. But now that you said that, he's going to be like, oh, Christian, fuck. He's going to drive away. Who's the next person? What's he going to say now? So you've almost allowed that to happen to somebody else. Well, I'm not going to cause somebody. Fear changes I, I'm not going to physically stop people. Well, except for you, of course. I'm not going to physically stop people from going outlandishly mm-hmm. in the wrong direction. It's art of fighting without fighting, though. Yeah. Yeah. Throwing, throwing religious stuff at somebody does not really scare them if they're going to call somebody a sheep. They don't really give a fuck. But, I wasn't, but that's just it, is I wasn't looking to scare him. But, I was be, just look- but you could be helping others that aren't as strong as you. But I was just looking to not have, not give him, not feed him the thought that he wanted, which was probably somebody to feed the fire for him to yell at and argue with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what you think, right? Yeah. But what if you could out argue him? Well, which you could. It was, you know. It but was- that makes you feel like you're not being the person you want to be. I had stuff to do. I had to get to work. And I respect that. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I had to get, I had to get the job. <laughs> I get it. I mean, I get it. It's not like I'm sitting here promoting, like, let's fight everybody. But I think there's a time and place for it. I really do. I think there is. And I think that, you know, when it comes to your job out there, guys, when you're working and you get to keep your mouth shut, you know, you have to. You need your job. But it's not right. (laughs) It's just not right that you can, you have to take that kind of abuse from rude ass people that are, you know, should know better. Just hey, they should know better. Here's what you need to remember to do. What you need to do is you need to grab a microphone. Mm-hmm. And you need to let all that energy out in a negative way mm-hmm. over the airwaves. I'm not even being negative. Don't, Are don't you referring take, no, to what no, I'm no, talking about? No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm just say, saying Jesus. Because I'm right now. I'm also thinking of the people who do have a shit job and they don't like what they do, and mm-hmm. they go home and because of that familiarity, oh. they take it out at home. And yeah, now we right. don't do that, but we do know people who have in the past. No, so that's not right. I either, get abused so. at home more than I get at work. You lucky. <laughs> oh, you mean verbally? I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, I just, yeah. you know, I feel like Rodney Va- Dangerfield all the time. You know, I don't get no respect. You know what I mean? No. That's how I feel. But whatever, it is what it is. I'm trying hard. Got to do what I got to do. What about these aliens, man? Do you know a- oh my gosh! That? You know what? I'm almost convinced to to get out of religion, Christianity, completely, and go with the whole I- aspect that. You know, the whole, um, these ancient um, aliens, you know, everything came mm-hmm. from extraterrestrials. All of our knowledge and all of our jumps in creativity and technology mm-hmm. and all these things are because, you know, the the, the, earth, the aliens have come down and mated with the humans to create a better race of people. I I was reading stuff about how there's there's theories that believe that, you know, the reason why we evolved so quickly as a human race was because of them messing with our DNA. You know, the evolution between, if you believe in that, you know, there's people that don't. Some people believe there was a beautiful forest with two white people in it that it doesn't had mean- an apple and <laughs> it went all bad. That's one way to look at it. Another one means, you know, there's creatures and they kind of evolved in time from life and life just happens. And aliens came in and go, well, shit, this is going too slow. Let's spice this up a little bit. And boom, from evolution, from, you know, ape to man went quick. Right. And it explains a lot if you think believe that. I mean, even down in the pyramids and all that shit. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. It is all weird. It's very interesting. Actually, yeah, I've been listening to um, Ancient Aliens, which was a uh, mm-hmm. it was on Netflix, but I think it was an old like sci fi channel or okay. history channel show mm-hmm. ten years ago or something like that. But so I listened like the first ten episodes and stuff, and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with Sam last week. Was it last week or the week before when we were talking about how being your community, the people that you're around, the you know whatever oh, you're, yeah. what you Start to believe in whatever you are fed. Yeah, influenced by. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Outside influence, like um, the Eskimo thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but it's the same thing. If you only learned about that one, you know, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I believe in God. Do I believe that it's depicted the same way? Like you just said, two white people and tried to eat an apple and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe that the first entities that we had, Adam and Eve, didn't have skin. That was their punishment as they were wrapped, they were bound in skin mm. to give them shame. Mm. So they could see them. It was just a life force. But it all depends on what how you want to look at it and see things. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that everything in the Bible is correct. And I don't think it was a whole bunch of white people running around and being all pretty. Right. Um, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent. No, 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 that's but, fine. You know, no, I but, you know, that's I'm just going off of the books that had pictures in it when I was a kid because I wasn't reading that Bible. I didn't understand it. But the picture books of, like, the, the Holy Bible, I remember all those photos. I'm like, yeah, a lot of white people in here. Mom, how come everybody looks like you? They did. They all did, you know. <laughs> They look perfect, too. I was like, man, what happened? 
<laughs> and I get so black and shit. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't look like the people in the Bible. I don't look like the, the people on the screen. How come mm-hmm. I don't look like Indiana Jones or Jesus? No, I don't look like any of them. But, um, yeah, the alien thing is weird because uh, right now in the news they've been talking about the U.S. Defense Department is releasing a bunch of shit about you know, crafts that are not made in this world. I mean, they're just talking about it right now. And it's weird because we're so wrapped up in the riots and the COVID and Trump shit that they are actually giving us like information from area 50 fucking one. Finally, like, okay, this shit's weird guys here. Look at it. And nobody cares. It's not headline news. It's not at all. And it's crazy that they're even admitting some of this stuff. And that's the stuff you can, I'd be interested in. Yeah. You can go to like uh, the CIA site and you can pull up like things about, uh, Aircrafts and unidentified flying objects and the research that the CIA has been doing since like 84 or 89, somewhere back in there. And they have PDF files where you can read a lot of this shit, even down to the paranormal, like, you know, ESP, all this shit that they're sure. like, okay, this guy in Africa can do this. I mean, they're talking about it. Whether or not it's propaganda or if it's real or not, I don't know, but it's the fucking CIA. You know, they've got people in there like X-Files doing shit. It's cool, right? But no one's talking about it. Now these new pilots and stuff are coming out, and it's validating that one pilot guy who said he saw that capsule thing flying around. I don't know what his name was. Something. But that validated this other dude who worked at Area 51 back in the day. And you're just listening to it, and you're like, holy shit. So isn't it weird, though, that that stuff is coming out right now when everything else seems to be falling apart? Well, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's... There's a certain amounts of information that have to be shared once anything goes public. Okay. So once something goes public and somebody says something, um, okay, so for those of you who watch movies, um, wow, I just totally drew up. The Martian. Okay. I so, haven't seen that one yet. That's a Matt Damon one, right? Yeah. I haven't watched it yet. I'm sorry. I haven't watched it yet. So there's a whole point of the fact that once they realize that they got a shot of where he was staying on Mars and the fact that he was left behind and something looks different. Mm-hmm. They are legally obligated within 48 hours to share that information because they are a publicly co- public company. Okay. So once they've gathered that information, it has to be shared with the public some way within right. 48 hours. Well, the people that worked at Area 51, though, anytime they came out and started talking about anything, they had people showing up at their houses going, you remember you're still under you know, classified blah 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 even though it's 30 years later yeah, yeah you're and, still and, you're still, and it's, it's, it's a shame to see like we know where your daughter lives and you know we know that you're here and she's there and that long drive from you know from texas to california you know it'd be bad to see something happen on that those those dusty roads that's the shit that they're saying happens when they even talk about anything so that's still going on right but so this but this circumstance that you're talking about now is something that was somebody from an outside source who said something first and it was backed up by somebody who had an inside source. Right. And right. now that they have had all that information, now they're sharing some stuff. So right. now that they're sharing some stuff, mm-hmm. you know, you know, nobody's going to be reading page four when everybody's paying attention to you know, the front cover oh, right. of, you know, what stupid crap came out of Trump's mouth today or why <laughs> Biden is, is Biden taking micro naps on top of people's heads or is he smelling the hair? Who knows? Um, yeah, yeah, that's another thing. We stop with the alien. Just you guys read up on the alien stuff because it's it's weird. It's really cool though. If you like, love, if you don't I, like it, I love alien like stuff. It. If you don't believe, it, you don't believe it. But fucking read about it because it's really interesting. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Um, I think it's fascinating. But anyway, but yeah, speaking of the Biden thing okay. with the with the hair sniffing, I. He just looks like a grandpa to me. That's like so stupid, touchy feely, and people are talking so much shit about his cognitive place where he's at and he's an old man and he probably is a little too old to probably be doing this stuff but i've listened to him talk and a majority of the time he still sounds like a statesman to me you know where he's he's forming you know rational thoughts about you know what he wants to achieve with his presidency and also portraying himself as a gentleman for the most part yeah he was sniffing girls hair but you gotta remember trump allegedly was living down the block from Epstein. Okay, there's there's shots of him with Epstein all the time and that, uh, whatever, Maxwell chick. With that whole conspiracy about the fucking Fuck Island stuff right. where they were going, you know? And it's like, dude, there's, there's reports of Trump having, like, parties with him and Epstein with 28 other girls. What the fuck do you think Trump was doing? There's alleged women all over the board that have attacked him for saying... Or I shouldn't say attacked him. That say that you know, accused he was, him. yeah, of, of of sexual wrongdoings. Okay, 
it doesn't take a fucking rocket scientist here to realize that this guy's a dirtbag when it comes to his sexual escapades. His wife, the first lady, was pregnant with their son when he was fucking Stormy Daniels. He got her to shut up. She did an NDA. She said, fuck you. I'm going to say it anyway. They sued. They, they, how that court thing fell out was irrelevant because he lied about it like any other fucking douchebag would that got caught. And people still look over that. And they believe when he's standing outside of a church holding a Bible, he's reborn. That motherfucker is not reborn. He is playing people. I Biden st- is not playing anybody. I still don't think he was holding the Bible. I think he grabbed a hymnal because he he's never been there before. He didn't know what he was grabbing. Well, he couldn't grab anything holy. The shit would burn up. He'd burn up. He burst into flames. That but, is that is a different type of book. But I mean, that's the whole thing. Is everybody who jumps on? Now, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Biden supporter. I'm not actually very much into totally this race right now. Yeah. Um, because you know, everybody acts surprised when somebody says something stupid or somebody lies. Well, guess what? Here's tonight on the news, a liar told a liar, a lie, and they lied to a bunch of people. And now your news broadcast who lies to people is telling you the lies about what really happened, even though it's a lie. Yeah. But doesn't that insult your intelligence when they're all lying like that? Don't you want to find out what's going on? No, I just don't want to talk about it anymore because, because it's that's what they want you to do from, from Bush to Clinton, to Bush, to you know, it doesn't matter. Right. If you are a person who's going into politics, your job is going to be to lie. Well, your job is going to initially start out probably with being, you know, I'm going to make change. And you believe it. And then when you get the job, they go, you can't do any of that shit. And you're like, why? And then they show you all this stuff. And you're like, holy shit, I can't do anything. You know what I mean? Right. I can totally see that happening where their agenda has to shift because they had no idea what the office of the president involves. Right. You know? And who really has control? You know, if it's one you know, person as the president or if it's a multitude of different things. I mean, we don't know how this world really functions, right? We don't. No. They, we, we just go what we think. But there's always common sense. And there's always that thing when people are like, you know, you know they're lying, you know. And it's almost like who's lying better? Better. And I, I don't mean better in Sorry. a way like, oh, that's a better lie. Who's lying the least? You know, there's, there's big lies and little lies. Like we say every day, like if your woman gets up in the morning, she goes, hey, baby. And you're like, hey, honey. And she's like, I don't feel good about myself. You know, you look really pretty. And you know she's just totally. She just woke yeah, up. That's she's a, a, yeah, she's right. a little white lie there. Not because you're trying to hurt her feelings, but because you're trying to make her feel better. Right. To me, that's Biden. That's Obama. Okay. Trump is the fucking, hey, who broke this? And he's like, I didn't do it. And I'm like, bro, you're the only one in here. I didn't do it. I got you on video. I never did it. He's that guy. And everybody who supports him is just like, yeah, he didn't do it. <laughs> and I'm like, fucking what are you talking about? It's right there. There's multiple clips of him doing these things and saying these things. And people just ignore it because it fits their narrative. Right. And that's that. And that's horrible. And you can go back. And they like, wouldn't put up with that if it was somebody in their family. They wouldn't. And it's not necessary. And that's what, you know, it's not a Republican Democrat thing because it's not like, you know, you can, you're not standing here sitting, saying here that Republicans are idiots because they're following him blindly. There's a lot of people saying that Clinton was fine too. He didn't do anything that he was accused of doing. But more Democrats voted for impeachment on Clinton than they did with Trump in the impeachment. See, Democrats are more apt to go, okay, yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> that is fucked up. I want to get your back, dude, but yeah, I'm not going to, I can't live with that. You know, where Republicans are like, I can live with it. It never happened. And they tell themselves this. And then they get other people who have that kind of rationale to believe it. And it's like, think for yourself. But then that's what's interesting, too, is because, you know, more, more Republicans are apt to be strong Christians. Right. So then why are they doing, following something blindly? I know. And you know who's on their team? Most racists are Republican conservatives. They are. So they're talking about the right being this way. And they're all, their teammates, if they look at their team, if we could get the entire team of people who are Republican, they'd look down that thing and go, holy shit, look who's on my team. And you got Jilly, Jimmy Bobob down there at the end with no tifus <laughs> with his fucking shotgun spitting, you know, in the platoon, platoon. I mean, that's the guy on your team, bro. You know, they could say the same thing about us if we've got LGBTQ people on our side. But you know what I mean? I'd rather have the LGBTQ than the redneck. That's just me, though. Don't call him Redneck. Why not? Hillbillies is okay. Dude, you watch Ozark. Oh, you can't call him Hillbilly or Redneck? You don't want to call him Redneck. What's a a good name for him, then? Hillbilly. Why is that any better? I don't know. It's not better. They don't live in the hills. And I know not their name's Billy. When they referred to her as Hillbilly, (laughs) she was fine. When they referred to her as a Redneck, she blew somebody's head off with a shotgun. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's a good scene, How do you forget about that? I know, that's a good scene, though. I love it. 
Oh, such a good movie. Oh. Or a TV show. A TV show, yeah. It's Almost, I'm getting there. I have one more down, so yeah, I got three left. That's okay. You're for doing this, good. For this last season. Anyway, I get fired up about that stuff. And I don't mind disagreeing with people. If, they have, if they're have, if they read and they're educated and they, 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 they believe a certain way and they back it up with the way they, what they've read, I'm fine with it. It's those in the middle, on the line. Like, I was having a conversation with someone we know. And he was like, Trump is a shitty person. But I don't believe he's a shitty president. And I huh? don't understand. Wait, wait, wait what? Yeah. I, w- I would imagine that if you're a shitty person, you would make a shitty whatever. You know, I'm not going to try. I'm a shitty person. Okay, what do you do? All kinds of shitty shit. Okay. Hey, you got to watch my kids because I think you'd be a great babysitter. No, you're going to immediately run for the fucking hills. You're going to find somebody who's not shitty to watch your babies, right? I mean, that's fucking common sense. So how do you fucking say that Trump can make a good president when you know he's just a monster about most things? He don't give a fuck about people, man. It's pretty clear. Why do people believe he makes a good president? It makes no sense. I don't know. That's my problem. That's my problem with it. There's just no, there's no real way to describe what's going on with people. I'm interested about it, and I don't mind disagreeing, like I said, but it's got to make sense. It's like collaborating. Hey, it makes sense. Right. You know, if it makes sense to the story, let's change it up. Yeah. I haven't heard one thing that makes it make sense. Not one. And I want to. I want someone to break it down. In We're going to get some Republicans in here. In this part of the story, we needed to do something way off the wall because everything was going too smoothly for a while in the story. So right now we kind of mix it up. Mm-hmm. We took a financial guru guy who's mm-hmm. richer than shit and went ahead and let him run the country to see what would happen. Right. And I'm, that makes sense. No, what do you think fine. about the plot twist? Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. And it didn't if, work. I, if I wrote that, you'd have been like, Chuck, that's never going to sell. You're right. And I appreciate but the people, Republicans. But people bought it. <laughs> I appreciate those Republicans out there go, yeah, you know, I agreed with them in the beginning. And after a while, the shit didn't work. So, yeah, I'm not there anymore. And that, that's fair. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a legitimate response to something that didn't work. I am not a Democrat. I am a Republican. The Republican that I wanted in office turned out to be fucked. So what I'm going to do now is going to vote for the better candidate so that we can take a step back maybe to take two steps forward next time. So when we have another four years of maybe a Democrat, I'm going to eat shit because I'm not a Democrat. But you know what? We're going to make sure we have a hella good Republican next time to beat his ass. We're going to, we're going to live to fight another day. There's nothing wrong with that because I have no problem with a, a, a Republican president in office if he's an honorable person. If he is genuinely overly concerned about the well-being of a majority, not all, but at least a majority of the people, that's what takes a leader, right? That's all I'm saying. Trump don't care about anybody but his own ass. That's pretty clear. So people lying to themselves to think he cares is my problem. It's like, how do you even say that? Well, you know, look at the job market. What job market? It's gone now. (laughs) Well, that's not his fault. The Democrats are lying about COVID. People are dying. Yeah, but it's all fake news because they got hit by cars, but they had COVID in their system. So now they're saying that the, the car crash caused the it, it was COVID. I'm like, they still had COVID, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, what if what if his immune system wasn't – what if he was stronger if he didn't have COVID and the, the trauma wouldn't have killed him? But because he had COVID, it killed him. Right. You, know, you don't know. I'm not a doctor, but it's like, fuck, man. Hey, I ain't going to lie. I wore my mask less. Until I heard from a guy I grew up with in California, you know, we, mm-hmm. were, we grew up as kids, you know, he lived on, we lived on the same block before sure. we moved away and him and his, I think it was him and his daughter both had it. It wasn't horrific. Mm-hmm. They, they, they had it, they healed, you know, they lost taste, they lost smell and all that stuff for a few days. Oh yeah. You were just telling me it about wasn't, that. yeah, it wasn't some, it wasn't a political ploy. It wasn't some line of BS. They got sick. He, he got sick. He, he talked about it afterwards. Right. And so I was like, wow, you know, that's, that's but that was the first time that somebody close to me that i knew personally Mm -hmm. had an experience with it it made it more real so it more made everything more real okay so yeah i get that i'm not a sheep you're not a sheep god bless you you're not a sheep well you are have a bless aaron have a blessed day yeah i'm a great fucking day (laughs) i am (laughs) all right Okay, so we talked about some things today. We, 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 really, we really got away from the that's whole creation okay, of but, the CCC Entertainment Group. But we're but trying I, to be, a, you know, a buy to the mass majority of people. You know, sure. we want to talk to creatives. We also want to entertain people and talk about shit that's going on that, that's really affecting everybody right now. So 
filmmakers are important, you know, uh, all creatives, artists. That's what we're trying to do. We're giving you little things here and there, little tidbits, hopefully, to help you out. Oh, wait. Yeah. What? I mean, you sound like you're wrapping up because you keep looking at your notes to see what all we talked about. No, no. But I'm, I'm just looking at the clock, too. Look at it. Who cares about the clock? Oh, fuck. We, we have stuff to talk about. What else you got? Well, you know, you were on another podcast. I want to know what was, ex- what was the experience oh, like doing something yeah. that wasn't us. Oh, thank you. You were on uh, Black yeah. and a Half with Silas and Samantha. Yes, right? yeah, Samantha Run and, and Silas Lindstein. Um, yeah, it's a Seattle-based podcast. We were, I was uh, lucky enough to get on it. And, you know, it was the first time I was on someone else's show. So okay. it was kind of weird right. being on someone else's show because my immediate thought was, I'm going to go in there and be me. You know, I'm going to talk a lot of shit. It's going to be fun. And yeah. And then you get in the room and you're kind of like, well, I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I tried my best to still be me, but I dumbed it down, you know, kind of like at work. A little bit. You know, yeah. when you're at your job, I did the same thing there because I didn't want to be disrespectful of their format and everything. But it was fun talking with them about a lot of, you know, filmmaking stuff, the origin story that we had starting out. And just the way they did their format was, was interesting. And I had a good time. It was fun. Yeah. Good. Black and a half. Good, good. Yeah, they did great. I really appreciate them. Hopefully we can get them on the show one day, too, because they're, they're, they're good people. Did you notice the episode? It was 111. Yeah. I know. It's like 1111 almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's like and you, you and you always looking at your clock. 1111. Take a picture. Chuck, huh? look what time it is. I do well, By the time I get the picture, it's 11, It's 113, yeah. but still. I immediately look at the clock. Five days, six days out of the week at 1111, I send Samantha uh, a little bubble text so she knows that I saw it. She does the same thing to me, too. It's weird. It's weird. You know that means... Uh, you, you're, you're, everything you're doing is on. You're on the right path. Right? Yeah, everything yeah. is in line. Yeah, in line. See, I know what I'm so doing. So every morning I wake up at four thirty-seven in the morning. What's that mean? I don't know. I'm you need to look that shit up. Four thirty-seven. Yeah, four, it could be four all plus bad. three equals seven. It could be at the point where my eleven eleven is what's keeping you in line because of the four thirty-seven. Like four thirty-seven could be some really bad shit, and maybe eleven eleven's holding you steady until you figure out why you can't get to four thirty-eight. <laughs> four thirty nine, maybe. Well, no, I'm on, I'm in the shower by four thirty nine. Mm-hmm. Okay, but no, if and, and and no offense to you, but if something's going to hold me up, mm-hmm. it's not going to be your hand. That's true. <laughs> I can't you. even cup you. Know, you. I, I can't I, even cup you with my I hand. Pre- I need I both appreciate hands. The thought. Yeah. Can you imagine trying to cup you? I'd have both hands right there. Then heavy, heavy. I'd have to do good. Like I got to do some bicep yeah, curls yeah, for yeah, a scoop, couple you months. Swoop a little lower if you're gonna pick them up. Really low, right? And it's a, it's a long way up too because you're you're a tall guy. So I'd have to <laughs> fucking you know just get them up there and hold them. And there'd be a lot. Some would be spilling over the sides. But I I try hard, man. I get you. I appreciate I appreciate yeah. that. You know, yeah. I'm glad to know you got my back. Yeah, or my balls. Front. Balls. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can throw them over your shoulder too. You can just carry them that way. It's getting, definitely, getting, it's definitely not gonna help. Getting older is not fun. Yeah, I know. Well, I don't have that problem. Like I said, you have more ailments than I do. I don't know if that's an ailment, but okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, swinging balls could be an ailment. <laughs> you know, you got to tighten that shit up a little bit. Uh, I'll do some curls. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? I'll take. I will take. I will actively take. If anybody who listens to this podcast and sees us on Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat, if anybody has some ideas on how to tighten that up, mm-hmm. if there is a physical workout not a joke but a physical workout that would work i am all ears now I, I do know that people say like kegel type exercises like women do to tighten up themselves yeah you know that's something that's possible too i'm doing them right now and i always do them doesn't do anything it feels good it t- well it tingles well unless you have to pee then it's like you, i gotta go i don't gotta go no, I gotta I, go it, I it still tingles go. i don't have to pee right now and it tingles oh. male kegels I'm still doing it. Why am I looking at you all serious? See what I'm doing? <laughs> I was going to say, why are you making such intense eye contact while you're doing your it, it's, it's just automatic. It happens. All right. Well, some water here. We're, August we're is coming good. up. Yeah, August is coming up. We're going to be uh, scheduling some guests here, and we've got a, a good list of people, I think, that we're going to be bringing on, some remotely, some maybe be in the studio here, too. We're going to make sure we give them COVID tests. You know how we do that? Yeah, we just ask them if they can spell it. No, you drip. You you you, you, you just drip. No, you take some of their blood. You put it in a petri dish, and you get a hot needle, and you put it in the. <laughs> and if it, and nothing happens to the blood, it won't react. They're good. Hey, if hey. it jumps the fuck out, Aaron, that's the thing. Oh yeah, that wasn't COVID. That wasn't COVID. Oh. What if COVID did do that though? You think people would believe it then? I think we'd all be scared of each other if that happened. I think we already are. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's too bad. Anyway, all right, man. Well, this has been fun. Absolutely. Um, do you have any questions for me before we go? Mm, other than, are you going to have a good attitude this week if you run into another person that calls you any kind of, you know, farm animal? 
I always try to have a good attitude okay. um, when it comes to farm animal. Excuse me, farm animals. Mm -hmm. um, depends on what they call me. Okay. You know, um, if, if somebody calls me a cow, I might take that more personal because you know I'm a little sensitive about the size I've gotten since I've gone over forty. So but the animal if, was what was able to bring out the, the 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 comment about Jesus and his flock. Yeah, that was that was the first thing that popped in my head, okay. which is kind of funny. You know, my daughter's impression was she says you should have ripped off your mask and spit at him and said you were a llama. That would have been good too. Yeah, because you would have freaked him the fuck out. Yeah, but if you was, but if I got it too close to him, it could be a felony. Oh yeah, you can't spit on people in general. And now, right? Yeah, you're right. It's like a flamethrower now. You know, if your spit flies out of your mouth, you're fucking yeah. Whoo. Um. No, I think you can do it. I know you're trying hard. I've accepted who I am, so it's fine. I'm not trying to be. I I, I want to be better, but I'm not going to try to overdo it in the betterness. The good thing, Aaron, is I've accepted who you are as well. Well, you're a good Christian. I'm just a good person. That's what you're supposed to do. See, you'd make a hell of a leader. Set people for who they are, goddammit. So what's going to happen when we find those aliens have been here and, you know, some of these people are lizards, like they believe, the conspiracy people? Why do they have to be lizards? Why because they, they believe be... in the fucking lizard people. They believe in lizard people and they believe in fucking the, the pagan gods that the right and left believe in and all this shit. And my question is, if this is a superior race of aliens, then how come in all the depictions of all the pictures and all the old stuff, mm -hmm. how come they're not just messing with the DNA? How come they actually show pictures of, you know, this god or, you know, the gods mm -hmm. and all these different things? How come this person thing came down and had sex with this woman and mm -hmm. created this? As, why did they just do, you know, I think we, we, you know, we gave her a shot. And we switched up her DNA a little bit, and then we made her have a baby because that's what we do now in virtual fetal fertilization. Right. I think our origin of how we cre were created in general, not like where you make a baby and baby knows, hey, I know mom and dad had sex, and that's how I got here. I'm talking about how it all started. I think how it all started can't be in us. Knowing our true origin would go against everything that the Bible was written for. You know what I mean? If you think about it, like if you were okay and knew how you started – that would be it. I mean, what would you have? You would realize that everybody's the same. There'd be no problems. There wouldn't be any racism. There wouldn't be any religious conflicts. I mean, we all come from the same place. So, and because of that, that's disruptive. And I think whatever race or higher power that controlled how we began knew in order for us to weed out the bad ones to the good ones, that's what we had to go. That's what we have to do. We have to go through it. I'm serious. So when do we stop going through it? When do they tell I, us this is it and this is how it is and how it was? I think we either learn, and that's our, our pattern that we got to work together, a majority of us do, to make things right, and then you won't see the wrath of change where the world's just going to go, okay, you guys are done. Whether it's the revelation and God coming through or the planet exploding, science, you know, it's science or religion, whatever way it's going to happen is going to happen right at the moment when the brink of destruction is going to occur anyway because we we fell apart. We lost as people. We ended up going too far the wrong way okay well this conversation is going to keep on going so, yeah okay, bro. so um that's one of the things that i've often wondered about mm -hmm. going off the stories of the bible and like the um i almost said say goodbye can you tell our movies in my brain right yeah, today that's not a bad thing um no the stories uh, left behind series okay okay so what if we already experienced the rapture thousands you know say 1500 years ago maybe right. it was shortly after jesus died and ascended to heaven what if that already happened? And Maybe that was a black plague. And that's... You never know. You never know. Right. I mean, th things that have happened that have wiped out hundreds of thousands, millions of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like in 2004, the, the thing in Indonesia. Right. The giant tidal wave took out 250,000 people. Yep. But anyway, so what if that already happened? Right. And if you're following the stories of the Bible, what if we're in that 2,000 years of everybody who was worthy is gone, and mm -hmm. we're the ones that are left dealing with everything. Right. I know. Jimi Hendrix is gone. <laughs> Kurt Cobain is gone. I mean, all these cool people, gone. I hear you. But everybody who's gone, I mean, what? so what does that leave for us? Well, There is no, for our lifespan, we'll never know the truth. No. And, and we'll never, you know, if if you if you look at it that way, we'll never ascend because we're the ones that weren't worth worth taking in the first place. But I, I didn't think heaven was done yet. Anyway, they weren't done making it. I thought in the Bible somewhere it said that when I read it a long time ago. The you know it's it's still in progress, kind of. It's an ongoing remodel. Oh, okay. Much right. like my friends' houses that I work on for them, I've been remodeling their parts of their houses for five years. I think I'm almost done. Yeah, I think that's really shitty for an uh, an extreme being. Not to be able to finish a project faster than he's working on. 
Well, he's probably looking down at us going, if you all would stop fornicating, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to keep adding to heaven. I know. But it's he, he, you think he have enough land <laughs> to, to have room for everybody. Right? Enough, enough God, right? Land, yeah. space. Yeah. Whatever you, whatever Who's he negotiating with in the contracts to try to get more property? I mean, <laughs> he owns it all. He's, he's in deals with Trump probably. Yeah, come on, man. He, he, can do, he can do better on his resume as a supreme being. That's all I'm saying. He can do better. Uh, all right, we're not going to go into anything. Um, you want to close this out today, John? Oh, well, sure. It sure was fun um, talking this morning. Missed Sam, which is, you know, I don't want to say it's weird because she's only, you know, we've done four podcasts. She's been on two podcasts, so it's not like it's, you know, different. But it was, she was being responsible today. Yes, she was. Proud of her for that. Yeah. She's taking care of stuff and doing things that she needs to do. Mm -hmm. She'd rather be hanging out here with us, even though sometimes the way she talks to Aaron, you wouldn't think so. No, she loves me. But obviously, because she keeps showing up with you wherever you go. <laughs> she doesn't know. Mm -hmm. She could just leave you home. But anyway, I want to say thank you to Aaron for coming over today, having some coffee, having some conversation. It sure is great always seeing everybody. And uh, Aaron... Thank you, man. Absolutely. Thank you, Chuck. All right, you guys. We will see you next week. And uh, thanks again for listening to Around the Real. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in to the show once again. And remember, if you want to be a guest on our program here, just reach out to us at cccentertainmentgroup.com. That's cccentertainmentgroup.com. Dot com. Dot com. Not dot com, but dot com. Don't forget all those wonderful social media sites you can find us on, too. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Do you have a Snapchat? I don't, no, have, a, no, I don't no. have a Snapchat. I don't have a Snapchat either. Do you have a TikTok? I have a TikTok. It's in my pants. That's not a TikTok. I have Tic Tacs. I got a Dick Doc. I, get, I don't... I'm, I appreciate you tuning in, and I'm sorry this turned out so weird, but... Um, yeah, it's fine. Thanks. Find us too on Amazon Prime with the Outrider. Check that one out. Oh, Let yeah. us know what you think. And again, we're on Spotify and iTunes and all the other streaming platforms for your podcast. So remember, check us out, rate us, subscribe. We've got new content coming from you every week. So stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you.